Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Magic the Gathering Arena and how it will save Magic in 2019, Magic the Gathering in 2019. And these images or just screenshots of Tolarian and the Mana Source actually really promoting the product because it, as any content creator will tell you, Magic the Arena doing well is good for subscribers, good for likes, good for donations, good for views. Uh, there's no there's no downfall of Magic the Arena doing well for a YouTube content creator, myself included. So we're all going to be very supportive of this new platform, I'm sure. Uh, to do to make it very simple, I created my store in late 2017, early 2018, at the time we, Magic, was in a bad place. Uh, December December and early January, people spend a lot of money, collections come and go, and that's why I created the store in December, and I hired a person to run the store. It didn't work out exactly like I predicted it would work out, but even then, I knew that the system, the economics of it was not very good at the time. Bitcoin was $16,000, so it was a lot of money. There was a lot of money pouring in, so I felt like I wanted to jump into it. But the money pouring in was not good money. So when I mean not good money, it was being, number one, it was Bitcoin money. So Bitcoins can come up, go up and down, so it's kind of like a new money creation. And number two, actually even... There is a vendor on a podcast who got who was buying bitcoins all day at like eight to nine thousand, and you would sell your magic collection to him for bitcoin, or you would buy a magic collection from him in bitcoin. So he accumulated, I'm sure, a ton of bitcoins at that point. So a lot of magic investors made bets on bitcoins, and yeah. But besides that point, there is a bigger issue. The bigger issue was standard. So the money was being funneled into reserve lists. You saw a reserve list spike every single day. 10 reserve list cards that were not playable at all would spike. Uh, buyouts were very common, but they were only buyouts on reserve lists. Standard cards rarely went up even a few dollars uh, during that time period. Uh, standard was in not a great place. Uh, in my opinion, standard was dying. And standard, no matter what you say it is, it is the bread it's the bread and butter of Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering cannot exist without standard. And one of the crazy things was all the money, I mean you had a flood of money, but they were all going to Power Nine, uh, Collector's Edition. Uh, Rudy Alpha Investments made a video on Collector's Edition going down 40%. That's absolutely true. I had a guy come in recently tried to sell me a collector's edition for 13,000 and I was like have you seen eBay recently and he was like no but I, you know I noticed the 13,000 15,000 I was like okay no <laughs> so people are still living in the past in terms of those reserve list collections or the collector's edition or the power nine or even in dual lands it's a much healthier place to be this year where you don't have these just random cards on a reserve list spike in price for no other reason than it has to go somewhere. Standard is very healthy. And MTG Arena, more to the point, uh, every single content creator is able to understand that this is very good for the game. Uh, the reason that it's very good is it will bring in a ton of new players. So imagine you have a friend he doesn't play card games. He doesn't know what magic is. He's a total uh, new player, completely new to magic. How would you teach him the game? You can bring him to a local game store, but that's a little difficult. Or if your friend lives kind of far from you, maybe lives in a different state. But you can recommend via social media, hey, try out Magic the Gathering Arena. You might like it. That's a very easy conversion. That conversion makes sense to me. I would never want anyone to tell them to try Magic the Gathering online because it sucks. And they're going to be like, wow, this is magic. Wow, this sucks. All right? So the majority of players, their first interaction with Magic is probably buying a pack from Walmart or you know having someone send them a gift. It's very casual. And this is the bread and butter of the whole game. You cannot have this game survive unless you have new blood come in. 
and what was happening in 2000 in uh, early 2018, late 2017, you had a lot of just random people buy the collection for investment sake, but they weren't bringing new, it wasn't new blood. So actually I would say it was toxic blood, which later Bitcoins and all that fun stuff, later it turned out to be true, but at that time I didn't know that, right? The health of a shop, my house shop is very healthy now. Um, it got so bad in, in that time period in uh, late 2017 that the biggest shop that does magic tournaments in my area, cold turkey quit a magic. No more FNM, no more WPN, no more pre-release. This was a place that had 120 people come to like on average a pre-release. This is a place that FNM would be 40 to 50 people a night when I first came to Houston in 2012. And now like are you 60 years later, are you kidding me? You can't even get like two people for FNM to a point that they just dropped the entire line. It was not in a good place into in that time period. A year ago, it was definitely not in a good place. Today it is the only difference I see is Magic Arena. And I see this all the time. I see people come in or their parents and they say, oh, my kid really likes Magic Grand Arena. You know, I would like to get them a stocking stuffer. You know, can you recommend some packs? And, you know, as long as the store is selling packs, like my store sells packs for uh, free for $10, including tax. It's a good value. Like they're going to keep coming back because they know this is a good value. And at the very end of the day, as long as you're not butchering your cust or potential customer base, what do they have to, why would they go to Walmart if you sell for cheaper and you can offer them advice? Um, and even I'm considering open up and opening up an area to play right now. We just order online. So it's like a takeout service. It's like a Chinese takeout. So you guys know Chinese restaurants, right? Some restaurants are takeout only, especially in New York city. So they are very small hole, wall, uh, hole in the wall places. And the kind of model, my thing on that, where you would order something, you would order X amount of packs and they could either be random or you could pick the packs. Um, we have a, a database and we would sell them on Facebook. We might sell them on Patreon, just, but the Patreon takes a lot of money. So I don't know, it still would probably be profitable. And you would pick, you would order, let's say, we had a, um, a grandparent order 50 Lost Thunder Pokemon Boost packs and about 20 Guilds around the Kabusa packs for her grandchildren because uh, they were really into it. And how they got into it was uh, they played the online games. Pokemon has an online game, and so does Magic the Gathering now, which is a big, big difference. So I'm uh, optimistic. And a lot of people will say that I will dispel this because a lot of people will be saying this, and I want to just dispel it. Oh, well, you know, people will just play the. Uh, online game they're going to play the online game so you're actually going to lose these like physical players no <laughs> no that is not the uh that's not what happens so historically zendikar not battle return to zendikar original zendikar was when the player base exploded uh exponentially and that was when magic on the gathering online was like semi-decent they reworked it it was a lot more fun Obviously, Commander also was a big part of that movement. Commander was super popular, and it was brand new. I think if I remember correctly, right around that time, they released the Commander decks, but Commander had existed for a year before that, before they uh, made the decks for Commander, like uh, the Kalia of the Vast and things of that nature. Magic Arena is going to save this game, and I know it's going to save this game because I already see it saving the game. If they had not launched this product, and for this product to be fully successful, we have to kill Magic the Gathering Online. Every YouTube creator, every content creator knows this to be fact. We have to kill it. We had to divert all resources to promoting this MTG Arena product because the worst case scenario is somebody finds Magic and they play Magic the Gathering Online. That person is not coming back to this game. Absolutely not. But if they find MTG Arena, they're going to come back. It is largely a free-to-play uh, model right now. So, like, you could, you don't need to pay money. And that's, you know, good for mobile games, right? I mean, if you want to pay money, you can pay money. And I'll, I'll say this. I'll just flat out say it. 
should they bring it to Mac? Yeah, I'll spend a couple thousand dollars opening packs. That's nothing to me for a mobile game, right? That's that's like one Fire Emblem Christmas celebration. Although I'm a free-to-play player now from that game, of course. Smiley face. Um, anyway, I've seen some really positive effects on Magic Gathering Arena on my locals, and I'm to the point that I would consider, and I am considering opening up a play area. I'm not going to be a WPN store because the prices are not correct. There's no point for me to be a WPN. The, the crappy promos for f and I can offer better prices than that. Plus, I don't want to be regulated in any way by Wizards of the Coast. I don't want them to, you know, pin, you know, judges who do bad stuff on me. I don't want them. Like, the liability issue is just tremendous. Like, I, I actually understand the liability issues. Most store owners don't. Um, when you accept being a WPN client, they uh, have control over you. And they push all the legal liabilities. So if something bad happens, you know, on your premise, guess who's liable? You. But then they're telling you how to do stuff. It's like the judges, right? Hey, judges, you're not actually employees or 1099s of us, which is the coast. You'll be like 1099s of the vendors or the person hosting the convention. And you won't get insurance. There will be no 401k. There's going to be nothing that like a real job would give you. But thanks for volunteering. Here's a packet of cards. Thank you. All right, before I forget, MTG Arena it will save Magic the Gathering at least for a few years because um, they'll bring a lot of these casual players in that would not come in otherwise. And these casual players are the bulk of spending. So when you talk about grinders and the in franchise players they tend to not want to spend money right the whole point of modern and legacy is i don't want to spend any more money this is the most money i'm going to spend and that's it i built my deck one legacy deck and now i'm going to play it and only this one legacy deck same with modern i built this one modern deck i hope it's not going to get banned and i hope i can play this deck for a long time so enfranchised players are not the ones opening packs. They're not the ones buying product. They're not the ones, but even, I mean, at most they'll buy a single, but then they'll ask, is this, can you match TCG player, like lows? Like, I see this damaged copy for $5 in TCG player. Will you match that with this near mint copy? And it's like, no, get out of here. Get out of here, you rat. <laughs> like, you know, I don't want to uh, say too much, but I would much rather sell to a casual player who wants to open packs and because they're a happier b less much less concerned about expected value and c they will suggest the place if they have a good experience they will recommend the place to other people uh, and franchise players think it's all about them them that so you guys know what i'm talking about right the dude who comes to f m and he has cheat by cheating he'll win f m all the time to get his 20 dollars store credit and if he doesn't win his 20 dollars store credit by cheating He'll just throw a fit, right? And then everyone feels bad. He'll ruin everyone's night. You know what I'm talking about, right? So the majority of players that have been buying my stock, my inventory, are super casual. And the free to for 10 makes a lot of sense, like, for them. Like, I can do it because I have the ability to do it from the financial standpoint of where I'm buying at. And it makes sense for them because they just like opening packs. So I found a bunch of dudes who just like opening packs. And they can open... Um, maybe, I mean, I gotta, if you guys are interested, I can sell you the packs for free for $10, uh, and they're in blister packs, so, the problem is the shipping, I can probably open them on, like, a live stream, uh, when I do sports cards, that's what they do. Anyway, before I go into, like, a long, wide, winded, winded, uh, conversation about that, um, I'm very grateful for Magic the Gathering Arena, although I've never logged in or played. Because it has done the one thing that Magic the Gathering Online should have done the whole time. Bring in new players. Bring in new players. And that's all you need for this game to be successful. You cannot rely on enfranchised players. Because A, they don't spend as much. B, they worry about expected value all the time. C, they never recommend the game. Or they don't have that many friends, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's the case. They don't have that many friends. Um, I would much rather have casual players who are happy to be there who are happy when they open a good card like 
for me, I'm in franchise, right? So when I open a good card, it doesn't mean anything to me. Oh, great. Con, nice. I have cards that are like 10 times as valuable as this. Great. But for someone who this is maybe their 20th pack and they opened the one Planeswalker they really wanted, that may be the most valuable card in their collection. Yeah, they're going to remember that moment because I remember my moment when I opened cards like that when I didn't have a collection. Anyway, bye guys.